Hey guys, welcome back. Ninja Llama here once again for another side project. This is the overview of the first part of our desk organizer, the base. Um, you can see its overall dimensions here, eight by four. I thought that was a decent size to, you know, take up on your desk and have enough storage space while not being overwhelming. And the basic premise of this is just a modular, it's kind of like a pegboard. It's just a 0.26 diameter holes on half inch centers. And that's just repeated all the way across the board here. And uh, that's, that's just about it. Okay, here's the material we're going to make the base out of. It's just some half inch thick pine board that I picked up. It's pretty smooth on both sides. I marked a line down the center to help me locate it in the machine. And this is our base. It's going to be the probably one of the most boring and the longest to machine pieces. So I guess we just better uh, go ahead and get it out of the way. Okay, wow. That worked really well. So here you can see our uh, finished base. And um, yeah, it's a bunch of holes. The next piece we're going to be making are the dividers. These are just little bitty blocks that you can stack in uh, any way you see fit to hold larger items or just something that's a little, uh, you know, has a stranger shape to it but it's just a, a one by half block basically with some mirrored holes. And these are definitely the, uh, you know, more interesting part of the machining as you're about to see. Okay, so here are the blanks for our little dividers. I've gone ahead and cut these out because, uh, you know, it's just a little rectangle and I cut out like eight or nine of them, so uh, not very exciting. What I did want to talk about was the fact that these are going to require the two holes uh, mirrored on the top and bottom of each piece because we're going to like theoretically stack them or something we want them to all be in the exact same location and that was a little bit more interesting because even if I were to do one set when it was on the machine I'd somehow have to flip it and get the other set you know in the same location as the first so in order to do that I just left both sides blank and I made up basically this little soft jaw um, to hold these and how it works is this is just the same size as our little piece here and we're going to clamp our piece in here you can see it's a pretty pretty decent fit and then we're going to mount this in the vise and as you can see I have little cutouts where my vise jaws are going to sit and this is how you get uh, mates on sharp corners you just drill a little hole or in my case mill out a little hole at the actual corner and if you can see this hopefully it's focused well enough that the corner just sits in there and you get a you know a flat connection on both sides like both pieces are are mated together on both axes here and you don't have to worry about the little radius in the corner like cocking it off to one side so there you go if you didn't know that there's a little tip and uh, I made up a few of these here's one of the blanks and the way that I milled these out is I just mount this in my vise it'll grip it like this and then I index off of here and here to put my center right here and then I milled out my relief which in this case was you know this little oval looking thing and that's going to help us keep everything in the same spot over all of these pieces for both sides because the vise will be the same here here and this is on the end it'll butt up against the vise jaws this way so everything should be as close as we can possibly get it to the same on all of these I haven't actually uh, ran any of these yet, so I guess we'll just see how well it turns out.
Check it out. It looks pretty good. I uh, I think that really made a difference. They all look really, really close. And I took my calipers to some of them, and they all measure basically the same, you know, within a few thousandths. So I think it was definitely a success. I would probably, if I had to make a bunch of these, probably make one of these that held a bunch more, because even only doing nine, it got kind of tedious just flipping one over after another because... The machining time was so short that you know I was constantly just swapping parts but still for this small part I'd say it was definitely a success and I will definitely be making these in the future and uh, cool I guess we can move on to the next part the next piece is the box it's just a two and a half by two and a half square basically uh, they're cut out with an eighth inch end mill and it's just pretty simple. It just cuts, you know, the outline of the interior, the bores, and then the outline of the part. Um, it's going to be pretty simple, so we're not going to uh, show any of its machining phase. We'll just move right on to the next piece. And this here is the next piece. It's our little card uh, paper business holder type thing. You really put anything you want in there. I can uh, even hold, like, some of my steel rulers in here which would be nice just to keep them up out of the way and within easy reach. But here are the dimensions for this. It's just, you know, a three and a half by half uh, little piece of wood here, and it's got a quarter inch deep slot. I did have the first revision at a quarter inch deep by a quarter inch wide, and it turned out to be too wide to hold business cards or papers. They would, like, fall over and fall out of it. So I went ahead and cut this in half to, like, an eighth inch and left this at a quarter inch. And so now that uh, we've covered that, I guess we can just uh, go ahead and make a few of them. Okay guys, are you ready? We have all of our pieces done. Let's go ahead and take a look. Ta-da! This is um, all of our completed pieces. We got the base here with all the holes in it and we have all of our stained and assembled um, little dividers and all sorts of stuff. Uh, I didn't do any recording of the staining process because I had to do it outside and I don't have an actual camera. I record these with the tablet as you may notice just because that's all I have 
and I couldn't really set it up outside, but what I used was this Watco Danish Oil Dark Walnut. It uh, turned out really well. You just um, flooded the surface and let it sit for 30 minutes, and then you would reapplied it and let it sit for 15 and then wiped it off. And this is what it looks like. And of course, I also used protective gloves. Don't forget these. And uh, it was really simple, and I'm really happy with the results. Like here is our pre-stain, so you can kind of see the, the difference that it made. And then I just used some wood glue before I stained them, of course. Put all the pegs in and uh, check it out. The machine did a really great job. The Nomad did excellent job of keeping tolerances. Like all of these holes are lined up so that way it fits good no matter what you do. And even when you do these longer uh, business card holders or paper holders of any sort, they just clip in at any point over the long distance and it's just real easy. So. Let's go ahead and just take a look at probably what configuration I'm going to be using it in. Like I'll probably have my business card holders up front so I can put them like right here. I'll have, I don't know, maybe something right here for like paper clips or something. I don't know. And then I'll probably stack up the rest of these right here and use that to store pencils or whatever. And I've already come up with a few changes that I'd like to make to the design. I guess we'll just put these things over here. I don't really know. They'll like hold up a notebook or a ruler or something. Who even knows? We can we can change it as we go though, so no harm, no foul, I suppose, but check it out. This is one of many ways you can organize it in any way that you choose, really. I mean, you know, if you wanted to, you could move this out of the way and put one of the holders on the side and I mean just your imagination is what's going to limit you here but one of the things that I have noticed that I want to change is basically these pegs what I did was as you saw I just took dowel rod and cut it off and then beveled it but I think I might actually want like on the new version of these like if I make more I'll actually machine these little pegs and I'll make them have a larger collar, like a larger diameter right there in order to uh, keep them spaced out because right now they're kind of spaced unevenly just due to the cheap dowels that I made but or purchased and then made feet out of. But overall, I'm really happy with it and I really like how the stain turned out and I think it looks cooler if the things are spaced apart rather than being like this, see like spaced like this rather than being you know squashed all the way down flat and I just see like this I mean this looks cool too but I think I prefer let's see here let's space these two out so we can get like a side-by-side -side comparison I see these I much prefer this one on the left where there's that space you can see through it I think it just looks better but personal preference and um, yeah I think that's gonna do it I hope you guys have enjoyed this project. It's been a an awesome use of the Nomad for me, and I've just really enjoyed, you know, getting to do it. So please leave your feedback down below, what you think about it, any improvements you'd make, any cool desk organizers that you've made yourself. Just, uh, you know, share them with me. I appreciate seeing them. Hopefully I can learn from their designs, and uh, I think that's going to do it. So thank you guys for watching. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, you know what to do, and I'll see you next time.